Hello friends, this is Satvinder Bhatia from Sukhmani Immigration Services, Brampton, Canada. I am a regulated and licensed Canadian immigration consultant. Today's video is very special because I got so many requests to make this video. So before getting into the what the video is, I request you to kindly subscribe to the channel. We talk a lot about on Canadian immigration news and update on this channel. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and Please like the video and share it with your family and friends so that they can also benefit from this. So without further delay, let's get started. What is this video about? So today's video is about spousal sponsorship and immigration, a very hot topic. So taking this up in this video, spousal immigration and sponsorship, spousal immigration. So the I'm, I'm taking following topics in this video. So spouses, what is spousal immigration? What is the definition of a spouse? Who is, who can be a sponsor? Who cannot be a sponsor? Who, what are the requirements for person being sponsored? And types of spousal application, fee and processing times, and lastly, the entire process of spousal immigration. So. Now look at, uh, let's look at each aspect of it. What is spousal immigration? So spousal immigration comes under a big umbrella of family reunification. So under family reunification, there is always a sponsor and a person who is being sponsored. So sponsor plays a vital role and is at the center of everything. So person who sponsors and person who is getting sponsored. It could be anyone and that's why so you have a person in the center who is sponsoring and you have a person who is being sponsored it could be a spouse it could be parents or grandparents I have already a video on parents and grandparents a complete details on this if you have not seen the video you can go and take a look on this parents and grandparents video also and then also you have dependent child under the age of 22 and then you have brother, sister, nephew, niece, grandchildren, all come under this family reunification umbrella. And you have adopted child also under the age of 18. Then you have any other relative, which is also a part of this under the family reunification umbrella. So now the definition of spouse is maybe different than what we have in the home country. As per the Canadian law, only three types of relationships are considered spouse. And what are those? Let us look at it. So first is legal marriage. We are very familiar with this. So legal marriage is, you know, you go to a Gurdwara church or, you know, any other mosque or any other place and get yourself married or then you go to the court and have a, a legal court certificate from a marriage certificate. So th that's the process of legal marriage. But here there is a little twist, right? In back home, it may be a marriage between the opposite sex, but here Canadian law also considers same sex marriages, same sex couples. So that's important to look at. Then the second type of relationship which is there is common law relationship. So common law relationship is almost like marriage like relationship. So they are cohabiting. Yeah, that is, they are living under the same roof, sharing responsibilities and sh sharing their expenses, all the things which are part of a marriage they are sharing, uh, except that they are not legally married. But this relationship has to be last for, you have to give the proofs for this relationship and it has to at least be minimum 12 months of consecutive relationship. So the third is which is uh, called conjugal partner. Now conjugal partner and common law are pretty much similar. The only difference is due to any reason the person are not two persons. Uh, the couple is not able to cohabit and live under the same roof uh, in conjugal relationship. Otherwise, it is more or less same as common law relationship. So these are the three relationship which are called under the uh, Canadian law as spouse. Now that we know what spouse is, now let's look at who can sponsor. Now 
that's very important because it clarifies the eligibility of a sponsor so a person can sponsor is only a canadian citizen or a pr card holder of canada or registered indian now this indian is different from the when we say india indian from india no no this is not that indian this is the local inhabitants of canada who were here and they are registered at indians so that's registered indian so these are the people who can sponsor uh, a work permit holder or a student cannot sponsor for a pr he himself is not pr so how can he sponsor somebody else for a pr so that's the thing to look at uh, he should be at least 18 years of old uh, age and uh, if he is a Canadian citizen and if he is living outside Canada, it happens many times people take a Canadian passport and may go to US to work or may go to Gulf, Dubai or any other area to work. So if they are sponsoring uh, their spouse to come to Canada, they have to show that they also will join and move with their spouse to Canada. This thing PR card living outside Canada cannot do this, they cannot sponsor. So that's important thing to look into. Another thing is undertaking. Now we have seen, and if you can check my previous video on parents and grandparents too, that there is an undertaking which you have to fill for that you will take all the responsibility in terms of uh, bearing the expenses, uh, giving food, shelter, and all those responsibilities you will take. That undertaking is for 20 years. Here the undertaking is also there, but it is only for three years. And important thing is in parents and grandparents you have to show your that you meet the minimum income requirement but here there is no such thing called meeting the minimum requirement but you have to provide the basic needs of uh, the food shelter etc that is important but you don't have to prove uh, that you meet the need of basic uh, income requirement so lastly you uh, a person has not been sponsored to Canada as a spouse in past five years. So that's also important that if you are sponsored as a spouse in last five years and you maybe you get a divorce and then you again marry and uh, um, sponsor someone that will not work. So now who cannot sponsor? That's another important thing. So if somebody has failed to pay the immigration loan or any kind of performance bond or any kind of family support, any kind of government money is due, alimony or child support, no, they cannot sponsor. And if you have failed to previously provide the basic uh, needs of sponsored relative uh, and they have moved on to social uh, assistance, so then also you cannot sponsor. If you are yourself under removal order, you will be getting removed from Canada. So how can you sponsor somebody else? If you are in jail or you know in prison, then you also cannot sponsor. If you are receiving a social assistance other than for disability, that means you cannot sustain yourself. So how will you sustain your spouse? So that's also you are not able to sponsor. You are uh, going through a process of bankruptcy you know you have filed for a bankruptcy and it's not discharged yet the bankruptcy is still on you so also then you cannot sponsor and um, you have already sponsored your current spouse partner or child and decision on the application is pending and it has not been made so still you cannot sponsor and or you have this is very important point so you have been convicted for a sexual offense or an offense which has caused bodily harm to the relative or you attempted to threaten or commit any of these offenses you cannot sponsor so if there are these kind of charges on you you cannot sponsor so now you know who can sponsor who cannot sponsor now another important thing is there is some responsibility there are some requirements for the person who is being sponsored who is getting sponsored who is in the home country and will be coming to canada so let us check if there are some requirements. Technically speaking, there is no requirement, right? So there is no language requirement. You don't have to meet any kind of English or French requirement. You don't have to give IELTS. You don't have to take IELTS exam or any other kind of exam for this. You do not need any education or degree also for this. 
there is no work experience required so and lastly you don't even have to show funds so that is the reason that's why you know many fake marriages or sham marriages do happen and that is the only reason the processing time do take long time because government cross examines and you know and check uh, the genuinity of the, these applications so uh, it is very important to present the documentation in a proper and systematic manner so that your better half can come to canada so these are the requirements uh, for person being sponsored practically there is no requirement if we see the only thing is that the person who is being sponsored should not be under any kind of inadmissibility that's very important there should not be any kind of inadmissibility issues inadmissibility is a big topic but i will just touch upon it there should not be any kind of medical criminal or any kind of uh, misrepresentation or any other kind of removal orders which are on the person who is being sponsored and is coming to canada if that is the case then he won't be able to he or she won't be able to come to canada so on their side the person who is in the home country and will be coming to the canada so that person also needs to furnish and provide documentation like birth certificate passport identification all those things and required to fill the forms so these are very essential items that is the kind of thing which they have to do that is the requirement they also have to undergo medical exam they also have to go through uh, they also have to uh, you know go through the biometrics and also they have to if required police clearance certificate is also needed so these are the kind of requirements for the person who is being sponsored right so now that you know that uh, this there are two types of uh, basically spousal immigration one is inland and other one is outland immigration so inland application and outland application are two types of spousal uh, applications which happen under the spousal immigration route so let us see what these are so under the inland as well as outland one thing is common sponsor has to be either a canadian citizen or a pr card holder which is applicable to both inland and outland now applicant in terms of applicant applicant can be a foreign national who is eligible spouse or a common law partner that is possible in inland so they are right here both husband and wife or the couple is here in canada and uh, they are cohabiting uh, living under one roof so there is uh, there is no such issue uh, but foreign nationals who are eligible or common law there can be a conjugal partner also for outland sponsorship now moving on to residency requirement as i said must reside in canada the couple has to reside in canada and cohabit cohabit is most important they have to live under one roof and this is not possible in outland sponsorship outland applications so cohabitation is not a mandatory requirement they can decide anywhere so spouse can reside here or the better half can reside anywhere else and then they will be sponsored and will be coming from to canada uh, so that's again a very important topic and i will bring up a uh, complete video on this this is that when somebody let's take a example right suppose uh, a person is uh, getting married he is a canadian citizen here in canada and he gets married to a student or a worker here who is on a work permit so he gets married to a person who is a student a canadian citizen or a pr card holder person marries a student so student will automatically get a spousal open work permit so i will touch upon i will bring a complete video on spousal open work permit for now i just want to say that inland sponsor inland application are eligible for spousal open work permit whereas outland applications are not now another very important thing right to appeal so inland spons applications there is no such uh, right to appeal there is a complete appeal process for outland sponsorship because sometimes outland sponsorship which are, uh, uh, you know outland applications are checked and sometimes if the documents are not there so the refusal comes and that is the reason there is a appeal process and uh, i will try to bring a, a 
video on appeal also this is a complete detailed process but for now outland applications they are eligible for appeal inland applications are not eligible for appeal lastly the processing time for inland and outland more or less same but inland applications are usually little faster but it's like 10 months and 12 months kind of thing so that's around uh, the types of spousal application now uh, what is the government fee the government fee to sponsor the spouse is $1050 uh, which includes sponsorship fee which includes processing fee and right of permanent residence fee so in addition if you have to undergo biometrics it is a $85 fee so if you are also bringing a dependent child then you have to pay $150 which is include sponsorship fee as well as processing fee. Processing time, I have already said, it is around 12 months. So let us see because this is something which is on the cards and government is trying to expedite as much as possible this time. Now, uh, let's look at the process, what the process is and this process may change. Right now, this is a paper application. It could move on to the uh, online application system also for now let's look into the process so what the process is you check the eligibility that you are eligible right and then you collect the documentation you fill up the forms then once you fill up the forms you pay the fee online you pay the fee get the receipt attach the receipt with your file cross check finally the entire file check the documentation is complete, check entire application set is complete and then you submit by mail. Here also, you know, when I'm saying mail, you can't, uh, you have to physically send mail, snail mail. So it could be to Mississauga office or it could be to Sydney office depending. Mississauga office is for inland sponsorship, Sydney office is for outland sponsorship uh, applications. So depend what type of it is, application is there. So uh, government has recently introduced an application tracker. Here is a snapshot of that application tracker. So once you submit the application, this tracker is right now only for spousal and dependent child application. So right now this application tracker is uh, latest thing. It came very recently, just about a week back. This thing came up, uh, application tracker. So you can see what is the status of your application. So in any case, if anybody has any uh, needs any professional advice with relation to visa or immigration matters you can reach out to our office our office is located in Brampton this is our email ID and phone number thank you once again uh, for watching please subscribe to the channel thanks so very much